So that is what I will spend my time working on, is to remind you on what to do for these examples. So we have sign, now again, we don't have the unit circle, right? So we have some relationships. So we're going to want to go back to using just regular good old triangles. But it's not just random triangles. We have triangles that are based on constraints. So we're going to want to use the quadrants. So here I have 7 of theta is 5 pi over 12, where secant is less than 0. Now hopefully you guys are more familiar for which quadrants when secant is negative, which now is in the second and third. If you guys remember, the triangles that we created were always with our what we called our reference angle or our central angle. right? They're always at the vertex here. Our 90 degree angles were always with perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, these are two angles, but what is the only one that makes sense when sine is 5 over 12? Opposite over hypotenuse. Well, does this make sense? No, because that would have to be a negative, right? So this is the only one that makes sense. Now, when I taught this chapter and we took a quiz and test, the biggest common mistake that students made is they figured out this answer was 11, but they forgot to make it a negative because you're in the second quadrant, guys. If secant's negative, that means cosine is also negative, right? Oh, I'm sorry. What are we doing today? Or what are we doing in this problem? Let's add these two. Now, in this case, um, for the next one, we have cosine of, let's do actually, what do we, oh, I didn't do the sine. Let's do the sine. Let's subtract these as well. Um, so in this case, I have cosine is 3 over 5, where sine is greater than 0. Well, sine is greater than 0 in the first and the second quadrant. And since cosine is also positive, I know that that's going to be in the first quadrant. And by using my Pythagorean uh, triples or Pythagorean theorem, you can figure out the sides, 3, 4, and 5. So if I want to do the tangent of theta plus alpha, guys, can we figure out what the tangent of theta is? Yeah, it's just 5 over negative 11, right? Do we know what the um, tangent of alpha is? Of alpha is? It's 4 over 3, right? So this isn't that bad. So this is the tangent of theta plus the tangent of alpha all over 1 minus tangent of theta tangent of alpha, which is tangent of theta negative 5 over 11 plus tangent of alpha, which is 4 over 3, divided by 1 minus negative 5 over 11 times a 4 over 3. Now, before you start to multiply these, we recognize this is a complex. complex fraction again. Can't we just multiply by the common denominator, which would be 3 times 11, or 33? So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 33 to get rid of all these fractions. Applying distributive property. You know, some of you might like it like this instead, 33 times 11. So therefore, you can see the 11s divide out. So you're left with a, uh, oh, it's not 11 times 33. Sorry about that. 11 times 3, all right? So sometimes it's easier to break it up, and this just says a 3 times 11 instead of writing it as 33. Because here you can see the 11s, when you distribute this, the 11s divide out, so you're left with a negative 5 times 3, which is a negative 15. Here the 3s divide out, so you're left with a 4 times 11, which is a positive 44. All over a 1 minus, here you can see those will all divide out, plus 20. So we say negative 15 plus a 44 is going to be 29 over 21. And actually, I'm not going to have time to do this. So let's just stick with tangent. <laughs> let's just stick with tan. Yeah. 